like the city it serves, London Underground is facing a rise in violence and public disorder. One of the worst hit areas is the eastern end of the district line, where Anna Burke is a driver. I've had my train shot at twice. Um, I don't know um, what, what sort of weapons are used, but um, on one of the occasions on the passenger door, I mean, there was a hole like an inch wide. You get into the habit when, when you come up here in the evenings of looking at the bridges as you're driving towards them. Many of the bridges have had to be caged in to stop stone-throwing youths, but some of the youths now take their chances climbing on top of the cages. This bridge here, I had um, two youths in the pouring rain one night um, walking across that. Um, obviously, I saw them as I was approaching, so I stopped the train before it, so they ran across the top of it to get off and go, you know. It gives you a massive um, rush of adrenaline and you shake. Um, and your heart is pounding. Complete alarm, my God, what's happening? What are they doing there? But, you know, you've only got split seconds to think. You certainly don't want them falling in front of your train. Anna's trade union has threatened to strike unless something is done to improve the driver's safety. And it's bridges like that that actually cause the trouble because the young lads, well, I won't call them young lads, I'll call them scrotes, because that's what they are. They'll stand on there and they'll lob stuff at the trains as they go past. As a station supervisor at Dagenham, Dave Latham shares the driver's concerns. They've had to literally turn the power off and they've had to walk down the track to chase them off because the trains will just refuse to go past it. This one was, looks like it was a full glass panel. There may have been a section in the middle for putting luggage. It's terrible round here. Terrible morning, mate. Out, see what you have to put up with, look. <laughs> you come out with an attitude to them, you're going to get it back big time. I've been threatened with knives, bottles. And to be honest, I just laugh at them. Because if they're going to threaten you with it, they're not going to hit you with it. The one who doesn't tell you who's got a knife is the one you worry about. You'll get them go down the slope, along under the tunnel, and they use that as a loop. Now, there's 600 odd volts going through that track. And if that happens to sort of um, urinate on, the, on that, <laughs> there'll be a little flash and then there'll be a few high-pitched voices for the next few years. It's after dark that Dave most often finds trespassers on the track. He's as concerned for their safety as for his own. You know, you see the speed the trains come into the station. It's, they're not particularly fast, but there's a few ton there. And if it hits you, that's your lot. And if you fall on the track, you uh, electrocuted, or if you fall in front of the train, it will just cut you in half. You know? It's all right, it looks like. It. Just a second. So I just passed the limited clearance. There was a kid sticking his head round the tunnel, round the edge of the bridge. As soon as he saw me, I, I was, look, he, I think he thought I was going to run right down after him, but I'm not running through that. But when he saw me start running, he shot off. That's what you have to put up with. They climb up, they climb from back gardens. Just think it's great fun to see how close they can get to the track. Drivers are very unhappy about having to work in this environment because um, nobody should have to go to their place of work and be in fear of having bricks thrown at them. Nobody should. If the drivers go on strike, they'll close the line from Barking to Upminster. As District Line General Manager, Bob Thurgood's job is to make sure the line is made safe for the staff, drivers and all who use it. 
there is practically nothing you do in life that doesn't have some level of risk. Whether it's getting up in the morning, whether it's making your breakfast, whether it's crossing the road, whether it's doing anything else. Clearly my job and, and the job of London Underground is to carry out whatever we can to reduce that risk to an absolute minimum. With the strike threat looming, Bob is under pressure to persuade the drivers he's doing all he can to protect them. At King's Cross St Pancras, the staff are facing a different kind of challenge. The underground station is being rebuilt from the inside out, with a whole new ticket hall underneath the old St Pancras station. But while the redevelopment is going on, the station is busier than ever. For staff, as well as passengers, it can be a stressful environment. As part of the redevelopment, some overground services have been suspended. With extra passengers in the tube, there's a danger of overcrowding. This means yet more pressure on the staff. Yeah, we're just about to close the gates. This is to allow for crowd control onto the station to try and make it a bit easier on the other entrances. Yes, please, guys, if you can shut the gates, please. The most complaints we get are, why are they being held outside this gate when they think that platforms are empty? Now, how do they know that? Because I can't see from here, so how do, can they see? I think it's um, the fact that they're all in a rush, they all want to get to work. And again, please, lads. And they want to get there now. They, they can't wait two minutes. And at the end of the day, that two minutes will save their life. Can I help you, sir? I'm just saying, I think this is appalling. Right, if you'd like to put it in writing and send it well, to London I'm Underground. Sorry, but it's the free, no, it's the free country. It is, right, you're right. Yes. And if I'm telling you, if you put it in writing. Yeah, who to? London Underground. Yeah. There is a poster down as you go down the bottom of the stairs. Yes, it was even worse. I had to, I had to walk to Euston. It was closed for over 20 minutes. London Underground is increasingly concerned about the effects of stress on their employees. Stress every now and then it does get older, you and I think, why? Before I come to work, who's going to try and wind me up today? That's what I was. And that, that, that way, I'm ahead of the game. We don't let the insults get us down or the abuse. Affects people with different ways, really. At King's Cross, staff have been provided with a stress counsellor. 19 months. Panos Doulias has come for a session following a series of assaults. Did you say it was four? been four occasions. Yeah, I've been uh, yeah, I've been uh, assaulted by four times. So it's quite mm -hmm. long. Yeah. If they follow you and they find out where you live, I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe get to break the house or the car or anything. And that's the thing that they stay in your mind. Uh, mm -hmm. The small amount they make you feel very bad. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I, I feel like uh, people they don't they don't treat us as humans. Mm -hmm. I feel I feel very down sometimes because they pay two pounds for a ticket. The thing they own us. It's not only the staff who are affected by the building work at King's Cross. Oh, Jagger, find the crossing. Find the crossing, boy. To the crossing, Jagger. Is that the crossing there, please? Oh, yeah, I think it must be, yes. Wait, boy. Jagger. Fine. For Anne Babb, commuting through King's Cross is made particularly hard because the layout of the station keeps changing. Find the stairs, boy. Good boy. Monday mornings you come and you don't know what's going to be different. Now, that's the corridor I had to walk down with the other stairs. We would have turned left here from that. I'm using different stairs to what I used to use before the uh, redevelopment started. Jagger, wait a minute, you've come wrong, Jagger. Back, back. Come on, Jagger, we've ended up at the ticket machines. Jagger, forward.
Bob Thorogood has called a team meeting to discuss ways of preventing trespassers on the eastern end of the district line. The problem is, of course, the they will say, well, that's what he says. Every single, every single group has got a standard program. He started work on a series of measures that he hopes will stop attacks on his trains. Definitely different. And we started putting up some of this uh, razor wire to prevent them really climbing up onto the cage bridges and the railway itself. Right. And that's a temporary measure until we get the proper uh, collars uh, is, put on the bridge? Yeah, I mean, like everything, it, um, these sort of things take time to get uh, organised and uh, get the workmen on site. OK, good. If anything was to happen... Until Bob and his team are under pressure to speed up the work they've been doing. The threat of industrial action will cause uh, a, an issue to become to stronger focus. But it would be wrong to say that it's not something that these guys have been addressing every day for a long time, and I guess will continue to do so. But will it be enough to satisfy the union and keep the district line running? We've got too many chiefs here and not enough Moroccans. So d there'll be just one Moroccan who's in charge today in case it all goes so up and then I'll get the blame for it. Basically, there's going to be a march today by the BNP and I just want to say that we're not here to preach about our views or, you know, whether it's the right thing to do or not the right thing to do. We're here to run a railway and our job is to make sure that our stations are safe for anybody that wants to use them, OK? It just happens to be today, BNP. It's St George's Day. And station manager Saeed Otmani is expecting a far-right demonstration to come to Bermondsey. It's Saeed's job to make sure the demonstrators leave the station safely, regardless of their views. Let's put it this way, I support Crystal Palace. I can't say all the Millwall supporters can't travel on the underground. So my politics are my politics and everybody's got right to express their views. And um, I think it's a nice thing that everybody can do that. The messages are not nice, but then... I haven't got to like it, I just run a station. Running a station can put underground staff in a vulnerable position. Two months ago, station supervisor Matt Gagliardi was assaulted at work. Matt, thank you for coming in. Thank you. Please take a seat. Ron, thank you for coming. OK, Abdul. Matt's come back for the first time since the attack to discuss it with his manager and his trade union representative. First of all, how are you feeling at the moment? Uh, not too good. Uh, I still keep on having uh, flashbacks to the incident. Mm -hmm. uh, it's quite traumatising. Mm -hmm. uh, it feels quite lonely the way I'm feeling at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you've been going to uh, Lennon and Regard Occupation have counselling sessions. Yeah. How many have you attended so far? Two so far Two since so the far. incident. Okay. Uh, normally between four to six sessions. Right. I have found the counselling sessions quite helpful. Mm. We've gone through a lot of issues. Mm. Not necessarily talking about the incident, but the way I'm actually feeling. Uh, I just feel sorry for my wife. I mean, this is the third time. Mm. I mean, I've been on the job 15 mm. years now. Mm. It's the third time she's received a call from the office saying Matt's been assaulted. Mm. I want to get back to be the normal me. I mean, I'm always outgoing, I'm happy, happy at work. But at the moment, it just feels that I've been uh, dealt a blow. It's been hard to come back from. Uh, my sleep has been quite erratic at the moment. I'm dealing with that issue at the moment. Ron Howe represents the RMT union at Matt's station. He's worried about the effects of this kind of incident on underground staff. Yeah. I've been on the job now 27 years, and in the last few years, we've seen quite a decline in behaviour, and I'm quite concerned. Myself, I've been threatened with a, a gun uh, a few years ago now at Neasden, where they uh, had an armed robbery on the booking office. Uh, colleagues at Wembley, several colleagues have been involved in incidents. Uh, one last year, one of my colleagues was involved in an incident where it turned out into a murder charge. Uh, you've only got a look at the board here, which shows you the amount of sickness we have on this group. While Matt's been off sick, a new uniform has arrived at the station. <laughs> new uniform, hopefully it'll give me a fresh start to put all the previous experiences behind me, all the bad ones anyway. And uh, I'll go home and try it all on, see if it fits. Hopefully it does, I haven't put on too much weight. And... A few weeks' time, she'll come back to work with a new uniform on. We've been 
been doing campaigning over the last couple of years since a young lad up there, Russ Parker, was stabbed, kicked to death by Asian youths in the area by anyone in Peterborough. The marchers arrive outside the station. Saeed is not impressed. Anti-social behaviour, isn't it? Loitering. Why aren't, they, why, aren't, why aren't they moving? That's what I want to know. Are they just going to sit there or what? OK. To protect the public, Saeed has decided to provide two empty carriages to take the demonstrators to Westminster. He calls on staff further up the line. Basically, what we'd like you to do is to have a member of staff on the westbound platform not to, uh, well, to encourage people not to use the last two carriages because they'll be full of BMP. I'd want a member of staff to travel in on the train. What's happened before is when we've taken people off the last two carriages, they've tended to walk through and then they've suddenly were faced by a group of BMP, you know, and they thought they had an empty carriage to themselves. We won't know the exact times or exact train until uh, we actually get them on the train, but we will ring you, the control operator will ring you to say what train number it is. OK, thanks very much. Have a good day now. Bye, bye. But while he's organising the train, Hello. Saeed receives a worrying yeah. message. We had a, a guy, Afro, who's got a samurai sword. There's a report of an Afro-Caribbean gentleman travelling around the network with a concealed samurai sword. Well, maybe, I mean, we're just looking at worst-case scenario. Maybe he's just going to a, well, I don't know, a Kung Fu ca convention or something. <laughs> 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 But Saeed is sufficiently concerned to call Network Control for more information. You don't know where he might be travelling to, do you? He wouldn't be coming to Birmingham, would he? It'll be the next train coming in on the westbound for them. With the demonstrators expected in the station imminently and concerned about a man on the underground with a samurai sword, the staff and police at Bermondsey prepare for the worst. No, Jagger, that's right, fine right, boy. I've had to ask for help because there's so many different <laughs> corridors here. Down that way is like a rabbit's den. Oops. It's all right, Jagger. Any station staff? Always ask for assistance because I did once fall onto the track years ago. What trains? Are they running all right, the trains? Yeah. Oh, good. You've got to know where you're going and you've got to be aware of what's going on around you because you've got the pickpockets and uh, the drunks that hang around on the, on the platforms. Yeah, we are a sitting target, but you, you, don't, you don't go out and think about it because if you did that, you wouldn't go anywhere. <laughs> Bob Thorogood is visiting a factory in Derby, where London Underground has commissioned a refurbishment of the district line rolling stock. He hopes it will help protect drivers from being attacked. All of the glass in the cab will now be brought up to what is effectively bullet resistant windows, which means that the chance of a brick coming through, which is some of the problems we've had, as you know, down the east end of the line, is going to be considerably reduced. Back in London, Mark Pryor is managing another part of Bob Thorogood's programme to protect the drivers. We got together with the unions and um, we looked at the areas that needed doing, and this is one of the major ones. We've actually tested it out, and if you start throwing, you know, the trains there, if, if you start throwing, it'd be like a hand grenade, it sort of go over the train. They're not, they're not actually going to hit the train, you know, the windows look like they were before. But um, I think it's going to work very well. The union is satisfied by this package of measures and the strike is called off. Hi, Saeed, duty manager Bermondsey. Just to let you know, it's train 305 coming towards Hello, you on the westbound. Oh, yeah, the yeah, last two carriages, if we can just have a member of staff there saying not to use the last two carriages. Back at Bermondsey, the man with the samurai sword has not arrived. Side is expecting the demonstrators to enter the station any minute. The 
the train has arrived with two empty carriages as requested. OK, listen, listen. Hi, hi. Signal green, OK. The demonstrators are successfully segregated from the other passengers and Saeed's job is almost over. Yeah, when I'm on my way back. At the last minute, the demonstrators decide to get out at Waterloo instead of Westminster. Okay. All of them are getting off here, which is brilliant. Oh, it's three level. Yeah, we'll go with them. Yeah, would you make sure the guys uh, on the gate lines are aware that these uh, people are coming up and that you just have the gates open for them? Over. OK, they're on their way up now. Said orders staff to get the demonstrators straight out of the station. For once, revenue is not an issue. Uh, would you please just plunge the gates on the Jubilee gate line? That'll be the quickest way, then we'll be getting rid of them. Over. Once the demonstrators leave the station, Said's job is over. That's good. I'm happy now. Since Matt was assaulted in his office, suspects have been caught, and he's finally back at work. Would you like to come through here? After the assault, I felt quite bad, but I received some counselling. And I'm glad to be back at work, to do what I'm paid to do, run the station and look after the customers. Next time, an emergency stops the Metropolitan line. Five minutes, gentlemen, five minutes. And at Neasden Depot, they're frightening off the pigeons.